Hello, and blessed Holy Week Monday to you. Today's meditation finds us in the Gospel of John in the 12th chapter, the first 11 verses. Here they are. Six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, the home of Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. There they gave a dinner for him. Martha served, and Lazarus was one of those at the table with him. Mary took a pound of costly perfume made of pure nard, anointed Jesus' feet, and wiped them with her hair. The house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. But Judas Iscariot, one of his disciples, the one who was about to betray him, Judas said, why was this perfume not sold for 300 denarii and the money given to the poor? He said this not because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. He kept the common purse and used to steal what was put into it. Jesus said, leave her alone. She bought it so that she might keep it for the day of my burial. You always have the poor with you, but you do not always have me. When the great crowd of the Jews learned that Jesus was there, they came, not only because of Jesus, but also to see Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. So the chief priests planned to put Lazarus to death as well, since it was on account of him that many of the Jews were deserting and were believing in Jesus. We'll read this week in the Gospel of John, and we will follow Jesus through Holy Week. Today, Monday, according to John, Jesus is near Jerusalem, but not in it. He's in Bethany. He's at Mary, Martha, and Lazarus' house again. He had been there many times, or seemingly many times. And he was enjoying a feast in his honor. With this scene, scene Jesus seems, uh, John seems to set up pictures of what a disciple is and what a disciple is not. Martha is serving again. You'll remember that story from the Gospel of Luke that Martha was, quote, distracted from her, with her many tasks, end quote, while Mary was listening to Jesus' teaching. Martha doesn't seem distracted at this party. She is serving. John quietly points out that Martha is a disciple because she is serving Jesus. Later in this chapter, we will hear Jesus say, whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there my servant will be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. So one picture of discipleship is that we serve Jesus and the ends of the kingdom of heaven, not our own ends or our own plans. While Martha serves food and drink, Mary serves Jesus in another way. She holds a jar containing a large quantity of very expensive and exquisite perfume, and she lavishes this precious ointment on the feet of Jesus foreshadowing the lavish love that will soon lead him to wash his disciples' feet and to give his life on the cross. John's picture of Martha shows us a disciple of one who does not miss a chance to respond to Jesus and serve the kingdom of heaven with extravagant acts of generosity and love. Lamar Williamson captures the essential nuances of discipleship here. This is what he writes. What the evangelist, John, wishes readers to hear in Jesus' words is the beauty of uncalculating love and its importance as a mark of true discipleship. The beauty of uncalculating love, extravagant acts of generosity and love. These are contrasted with Judas, pictured here as sort of an anti-disciple. Judas finds reasons why not to act with extravagant generosity and love. 
Now we know the end of the story, and John even tells us here that Judas is a thief who steals from the community bank account. We know Judas is a shady character, that he has ulterior motives. And that is another picture of what discipleship is not. So we have pictures of what discipleship is, serving Jesus and his plans and the kingdom of heaven, serving with uncalculated acts of generosity and love and lavish acts. And we also here then have a picture of what discipleship is not, calculating our love, withholding our generosity, in our world today, we have to be very careful with these pictures, lest we try to justify our own desires. There are times when people of good faith always have a seemingly reasonable explanation for reserving extravagant love or withholding generosity. And they have considerable sympathy for the fiscal concern expressed by Judas. And likewise, there are people of good faith who excuse excessive spending on something very lavish, claiming Mary's example. These are two extremes, but extremes that we have to be careful of, and all of the places in between those two extremes. Now hear me very carefully. I don't think these extremes are problems in our congregation. I do think the key here is discerning when it is that God is calling you and me and our congregation to extravagant acts of love and generosity, and when it is that our own desires are pointing the way. When does God call us to prudence? And when does God call us to generosity? It's not an easy discernment. What I'd like us to take away today is this idea of God's extravagant love toward us and all the world in Jesus Christ. God's love is uncalculating, just as Mary's use of the costly perfume. As you move through your day today, think about your own life. If God's love were calculated, how much would you receive? The fact is, God's love is not calculated. It comes to you and me continually and in unfathomable quantities. It never runs dry and you and I cannot outrun it no matter what we do or don't do. No matter what we think or what we say, God's love continues to envelop us. It comes to us unbidden and undeserved. Because God doesn't deal with whether or not his love is deserved, because in fact, it never is. And yet, it's always there. Take that gift with you today. Amen. Let us pray. Lord God, you lavish your love upon us as Mary lavished costly perfume on Jesus' feet. We are undeserving of your love for us, and still you pour it out. How grateful we are, how very, very grateful. In these days, in this holy week, call our attention to the love you pour into our hearts. Open us as vessels that your grace may pour into the world through our uncalculated, generous acts of love, through Jesus Christ, who gave his own life for the world. Amen. May God bless you today and each day, those whom you love and those whom nobody but God loves, this day forevermore. Amen.